we were interested in making a telescope that anybody could download and, and build themselves. So obviously one of the things that we wanted to do was make it 3D printable. And so the idea is we'd use one screw and an Allen key and then you could literally just get the parts and, and then construct it. The whole thing can be built for about 200 pounds. So the idea is to really um, make the cost as low as possible. My name is James Parr. I'm the founder of the Open Space Agency. The Open Space Agency is dedicated to citizen science, DIY, engineering, um, the do-it-yourself mentality, um, and the belief that everyday folks can have their own space program. We were increasingly interested in how consumer and off-the-shelf technologies were starting to approach the level of pro technologies 10 years ago. So the camera on the NASA's uh, Mars rover is essentially the same quality as a, as a modern smartphone. The fact that consumer technology is um, now evolving so quickly made me wonder whether it was possible to do and replicate the achievements of the space program using off-the-shelf technology. And so to do that, we decided to build the Ultrascope, something that was really low cost, robotic, uh, digital, and had the ability to um, look at objects from multiple locations and combine those observations in a way that was meaningful and had scientific validity. As well as being a 3D printed scope, it's also a robot. And any robot has to have brains. So this is um, the brains of it, which is an Arduino Mega and then we have our own uh, shield which basically runs the, uh, the motors and the drivers um, and the Bluetooth controller and uh, this just slots together like that then that slots onto the front of the scope so we've got the the camera basically of the, of the phone which is how we take images of the night sky and then the images that are taken on the phone are then sent uh, over 4G to the cloud and then we can see what we're looking at here on our cloud app and of course, when we have um, you know, hundreds if not thousands of these scopes around the world, then you'll be able to say, oh, I wonder what the sky is going to be like in South Africa, say, and you'll be able to dial up that scope and then see what that scope's seeing. So I really love this time of the evening because you can really start to see the shadow of the Earth um, rising. So it means we're not too far away from uh, seeing some stars, which just means it's time to reveal the mirror. So this is the primary mirror. Uh, when we get some um, objects to look at, the light will come in here, bounce off the primary mirror, uh, bounce up here um, to the secondary mirror, and then that secondary mirror bounces the light uh, into the CCD of the smartphone. So when we started out, the Open Space Agency felt a bit like an art project or something. You know, it seemed so outlandish that it was possible to have your own space agency and originally you know the big rockets were things that um, governments could only do and then business came along and we're seeing that now and um, we're now in the domain of, of personal space or citizen space. I think um, the Open Space Agency has a part to play, it really does. As we become a spacefaring civilization there's so much work to do and I'd love for OSA to be there when we go to Mars and um, it might be that it's a NASA logo on the side of the spaceship but um, you know, for some of the experiments to be OSA experiments or perhaps the, um, some of the technology that the astronauts use in their space, space suits, you know, it might not be branded but it'll be there and, and we'll know uh, as a bunch of geeks that we helped get there. <laughs>